the first thing to do when working a heating or cooling curve calculation is to draw out the heating or cooling curve. The heating curve will have heat added on the x-axis and temperature on the y-axis. Most substances will have two phase changes where the temperature does not change, going from a solid to a liquid and going from a liquid to a gas. We'll draw those as flat lines. Connecting those places is where the uh, only one substance is present and the temperature is changing. Those will be diagonal lines. Now we can see all the changes the substance will undergo as the solid warms up, as it melts into liquid at its melting temperature, as the liquid then warms up, as it changes into vapor at its boiling temperature, and then finally as the vapor heats up. This problem will take us from benzene gas at 95 degrees C, somewhere in this region, down to liquid benzene at 25 degrees C. I'll mark the starting and ending points on the, on the curve. By mapping out the problem, we can see that we'll need to carry out this calculation in three steps. Step one, we'll take the gas at 95 degrees C down to the gas at its boiling temperature. Step two, we'll take the gas at its boiling temperature, condense it into liquid still at the boiling temperature. Remember, there are no temperature changes during a phase change. And step three, we'll take liquid at the boiling temperature down to liquid at 25 degrees C. We'll use two different um, equations for this type of calculation, one when the temperature is changing and one when it's not changing. When the temperature is changing, we'll use the specific heat calculation. Q equals M times C times delta T. Q is the energy released when a certain mass of a substance with a certain specific heat undergoes a certain temperature change. M can actually be mass or moles depending on the units of specific heat. When the temperature is not changing, we'll use the moles or mass of the substance times the delta H of fusion or the delta H of vaporization, depending on which phase change it's undergoing. For each of these equations, just make sure your units match up. If C has units of joules per mole per degree C, make sure that M is in moles and delta T is in degree C. If instead C had units of grams, joules per grams per degree C, then we would need a mass in grams. Same thing for delta H. If delta H is given to you in kilojoules per mole, M should be moles. If it's kilojoules per gram, M should be grams. Step 1 takes gas at 95 degrees C to gas at 80.1 degrees C. Because the temperature is changing, we'll use Q equals M times C times delta T. We're given the mass of benzene gas in the problem, and we know the specific heat capacity of the gas as well. We can find the delta T from the temperature change from 95 degrees C to 80.1 degrees C. Let's take a closer look at our units. The mass is given in grams, but the specific heat capacity of the gas is given in joules per moles per degree C. So we'll need to convert mass into moles before we continue. Recall from the organic chemistry chapter that benzene is a six-membered ring with alternating single and double bonds, C6H6. This gives us a molar mass of 78.12 grams per mole. So 10 grams will give us 0 0.128 moles. Now we can plug our variables into our equation and solve for Q. The heat released equals 0.128 moles times 82.44 joules per mole per degree C times negative 14.9 degrees C. All of our units cancel, and we find that the heat released is 157.2 joules. Notice the negative sign. This negative sign tells us that the heat is being released. This is an exothermic process as the gas cools down. Next, we need to calculate the heat released when the benzene gas at its boiling temperature condenses into liquid still at the boiling temperature. This calculation will not involve a temperature change, so we'll need to use the equation Q equals M times delta H. We're talking about gas condensing to liquid, so we'll need to use the delta H of vaporization. 
Once again, because the units are kilojoules per mole, our m will be in moles. Now that we have our variables, we can plug them into the equation and find out how much heat will be released. Be careful with your signs during this calculation. Gas condensing into liquid is also an exothermic process, so the sign of Q must be negative. The way we can figure this out using the calculation is that it requires 30.77 kilojoules of heat in order to vaporize one mole. So it will release 30.77 kilojoules of heat when one mole condenses. Releasing heat is exothermic, and so our delta H will actually be negative. The total heat released for 0.128 moles is negative 3.939 kilojoules, or negative 3,940 joules. Step 3. When liquid benzene at its boiling temperature cools down to 25 degrees Celsius, also includes a temperature change. So we'll need to go back to Q equals M times C times delta T. Our mass is the same as before, 10 grams or 0.128 moles. Our C must be the specific heat capacity of the liquid. And our delta T will only be from 80.1 degrees C down to 25 degrees C. Let's plug the variables into the equation and see how much heat is released. Step 3 releases 950.7 joules of heat. Once again, we have a negative sign for an exothermic process. The last thing to do is to add up the heat released at each step. Don't forget your addition and subtraction rule. Altogether, the three steps released negative 5,050 joules of heat. Hope this video was helpful in showing you how to do heating curve calculations.